All right, this is the uh, very long awaited number five in our list of items that contribute to making a great dog. Number five is a tough one for me because there's a lot of components to it. But it's, the title of it is Perform Like a Champion. You know, champions behave certain ways. You can tell them, you can tell them a mile away and you have to you have to learn the behavior of champions, and there's a lot of parts to that. For instance, you can't be a champion and behave and act like a failure. It, they, don't, they don't go together, so you have to study things that are necessary for champions. So I'm gonna list a few of those things. First of all, you have to know the rules. Can you imagine what it'd be like if you're, you're, you're trying to um, win field trials or hunt tests or be the top dog and you don't even know the rules well enough. You, you've got to know the rules so you can't be stumped. You have to be an expert in the rules. You have to understand health of a dog. You can't have a dog be a great dog, but, but he's not healthy half the time. Uh, you have to be a, become almost an expert in taking care of your dog, having him be fit, and um, having him be healthy and vibrant all the time. You have to play every game. You can't be on the sidelines with injuries and, and illnesses and things, and the experts know how to be better at that. Obviously, there can be accidents, but be really smart about taking care of your dog, having him be healthy, feeding him in a way that others may not do because they don't know enough. So, uh, acting like and being like, performing like a champion. Um, that includes, I just mentioned health. You have to have a veterinarian, for instance, like, so you can call them like that. The least little thing that happens, boom, you've got to be able to get it cleared up. These are not small things. You know, you can take a minor injury uh, that can become a major injury if it's not taken care of immediately. You have to be smart about that. The other thing that is, to me, very important is help others. You know, um, when I first started out, I remember a very well-known and uh, one of the top field trialers of his day was a fellow out in California by the name of Andreas P. Jones. And he was a old school type of guy. He had a station wagon and at lunchtime he'd bring out his little wicker set with the martinis and everything. It was a thing of beauty. Uh, he wore a tie and, and uh, but the thing I remember about him is that when I first showed up and nobody knew anything about me or who I was and everything, he was the one that befriended me. He was the one that said, hey, uh, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do to help you? Do you have some training grounds? Would you like to, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we can all do that. So maybe at a field trial or at a hunt test, if you spot somebody that's kind of a new person or you can tell they're kind of not sure of things or what to do, help them out. You know, um, you might need help yourself someday. And so it's very good to be kind and try to help people that you can tell who they are. They're not as sure of things and they're not, they don't know quite where to go or 
what what the test really means and those kind of things. So be the person that helps the the little guy, the guy that other people aren't paying any attention to. And I think this probably may be one of the biggest things. You know, um, it's just as important in life as it is in in re the retriever sport. When you spot somebody that needs a little help, give it to them. It'll come back to you many times and it'll be worth it. And it'll be, you'll become a special person because you'll be the known as the one that is helping other people. The other thing is that um, don't whine. You know, it gets tiresome. You go to some of these events and all you do is listen to people who complain about some aspect of it, either the judging or the grounds or the weather or the something. It's, um, it's really tiresome. If you have something that you don't like, keep it to yourself because I can tell you nobody cares. They don't care what you're whining about and they don't want to hear it. And you'll get where you don't want to hear other people whining. So don't whine, don't complain. If you have an issue, keep it to yourself because nobody wants to hear it. Don't be the person that's always whining. Um, I don't want to sound mean about it, but it, it really is something to stay away from. The other thing that I think is really important is to constantly work on your own handling. Study other handlers. You know, I'm fascinated by them. I watch them like a hawk. And eventually you'll notice and find out who the best handlers are and then watch them even closer. See little things that they do, little things that most people aren't noticing because they're too busy just talking and not paying attention. So study the handlers and use what you discover from them and how you can be a better handler. I've, I've even done a, vi a complete video on this one topic on how to be a better handler. So you have to pay attention to it. Your dog doesn't have a chance if you're not a good handler. So you have to really work on that part of it. And part of that is studying other handlers. Another thing that it's a little hard for me to describe, but I think you have to learn to be authentic. Be your own person. Quit copying other people. It's one thing to study handlers, but you don't want to copy what other people do. Be thinking about why they're doing it. What's the reason for it? Maybe you can learn to do that thing better because you're not just copying. I know this started for me way in the beginning when somebody said, oh, you've got to, um, you've got to go, the do your dog's got to go through ear pinch. And I thought, they do? Why is that? What is the reason they have to have that? Why do they have to go through it? And that kind of questioning led me to a whole career in dog training by just asking those kind of questions. Why do people do things? And should you do it the way they do it? And can you improve on it? Try to do some of your own thinking. Don't just copycat everything that somebody says as being real. So that try to be your own person a little bit. Be real, be authentic. Uh, you don't have to try to imitate other people. Just be your own person the way you are and you'll be, um, it'll go a long way to helping you be this real champion. Also, and I think it's very important, and I don't think very many people do it, and that is study judges. 
know the kind of tests they set up, know the kind of dogs they seem to favor. Uh, some judges fit right into your program. They like the kind of dogs you like. They, send, they set up the kind of tests that make good dogs look good. And there are some judges maybe you're better off not running under because they're way off in terms of preferring the kind of dog that you prefer. You should have a little sort of a, uh, a little black book on who, who the best judges are and why they're good and the kind of tests that they set. And then you can look for when they judge and try to, try to run under them because they're the kind of judges that have the kind of dogs that you like. So, and also take notes on the kind of tests that they set up so that when you go to a, a certain trial that has a judge that if you're familiar with them, you can have practiced the type of tests you know they set up. For instance, just a hypothetical case, let's say you know a certain judge likes to put a lot of decoys out. Not that that happens very much anymore, but let's just say that. You know that. Well, it would make sense to practice with a few decoys. So get to know as many judges as you can, the kind of test they set up and the kind of dogs that they prefer, and that'll help you decide which trials to go to. In a general way, part of being a champion is acting like a champion and doing things that champions do. They study, they work, they train, they practice, they do these things. So this was a, a little harder of a topic for me, but I think it's really important. So uh, in the meantime, if you want to get notified when these blogs come out, just sign up on my website. There's a place, little box for your email, and you'll get notified. And in the meantime, have a great day and have fun with your dog. This is, uh, we're, we're halfway through, actually. If I have three more. I haven't heard too many guesses on what the three are going to be. So, anyway, adios.